Welcome to Lecture 11 of Introduction to the Six. Uh, in today's lecture, I'll, I'll talk about uh, literature and film. And uh, again, as in the case of art, I'll just give a very few uh, examples, but enough, hopefully, to whet your appetites to explore uh, more thoroughly. Uh, so Sikh literature, we can think of as divided into perhaps uh, four categories. One is uh, sacred literature. And this includes, of course, the main sacred text, the Guru Granth Sahib, but also uh, uh, what I'd call a secondary, t uh, secondary text, the Dasam Granth, which is a compilation uh, around the time of uh, Guru Gobind Singh, and it includes some works of Guru Gobind Singh himself, but also uh, uh, works of others. And then the works of Bhai Gurdas, who was um, a uh, relative of, of Guru Arjan and who um, uh, was the scribe of the uh, original manuscript of uh, the Ad Granth, which became the Guru Granth Sahib. And his um, uh, works also a uh, very important part of the Sikh canon. The second category is um, uh, the Janam Sakhis, which I talked about a little bit in the context of Sikh art. And these are stories of Guru Nanak's life. I'll say a little bit more about them uh, today and then modern prose and modern poetry. So I'll start with the Guru Granth Sahib and uh, <clears throat> give you some uh, uh, just uh, brief examples. Uh, it, it's a, a very, very long text, and it's written almost exclusively in uh, poetry with uh, meter and rhyme. Uh, it's organized according to um, uh, rags, the uh, musical modes of uh, uh, Indian classical music tr music tradition. Uh, this composition is is from um, early in, in the text on page fourteen in uh, Sri Rag, and uh, what I'll uh, just uh, point out to you is the uh, the use of metaphor in uh, these verses on uh, this this slide and the next. The um, uh, the guru is uh, addressing the divine and uh, uh, describing how, uh, how uh, limitless the divine is and how uh, uh, difficult it is to, uh, to understand and make that connection. And the, um, the guru talks about, uh, for example, uh, being um, uh, cut into pieces and ground into flour and still not being able to uh, uh, understand the greatness of, of uh, the divine. And uh, um, then uh, talks about uh, flying and uh, uh, being invisible, neither eating nor drinking. And then in another metaphor, um, uh, trying to write uh, on uh, hundreds of thousands of stacks of paper uh, with uh, limitless ink. So again, the idea is to use um, uh, poetic metaphors from daily life to convey the limitlessness of the divine. This is uh, a composition from uh, later in, in the Guru Granth Sahib. Again, the organization is according to rags. This is in Rag Tukhari. This is from a composition known as uh, Barama, 12 months. And here the, the organizing theme is uh, the different months of the Indian calendar. Uh, in this uh, selection, the month is Savan, which is part of the rainy season, the monsoon season in, in uh, India. And uh, the uh, uh, guru says the rainy season has come and the clouds have burst into showers. And uh, this is uh, the metaphor here is the uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, love for the divine and the be beloved is uh, uh, pining for, um, for her um, um, husband. And uh, again, there's, there's a gender aspect here, which I'll, I'll talk about in a future lecture. But this is actually a common metaphor in, the, uh, uh, in uh, Indian religious poetry of this time. Um, the um, final example I want to give from Guru Granth Sahib is, is from uh, around the middle of the text. And uh, this is in Rag Tilang. And this is, a, a, again, a very uh, nice metaphor where being uh, connected with the divine is uh, uh, described as uh, uh, like uh, a shawl being dyed so that the color 
uh, is is uh, mixed is, is becomes part of the cloth, and so in that that sense the uh, connection is uh, uh, immutable and uh, unchangeable. So the, there's uh, uh, again many many wonderful uh, poetic metaphors in the uh, Guru Granth Sahib. There's um, also a lot of uh, imagery of nature, which uh, is is I think particularly interesting in the context of um, modern thought about uh, the value of the environment. Um, so here again are the uh, two paintings I uh, showed you earlier uh, in the last lecture uh, from the uh, life of Guru Nanak. This is from a Janam Sakhi manuscript, illustrated manuscript uh, from the early 19th century. And these are, of course, real life um, events in, uh, from Guru Nanak's life. But there's another, uh, another kind of uh, Janam Sakhi which uh, uh, tells uh, stories which may or may not be uh, documented in this story, which is uh, known as Satcha Sauda, True Bargain. Uh, Guru Nanak, as a young boy, was given uh, money by his father to buy supplies for their uh, business. But um, uh, instead, he uses the money to uh, buy food to feed uh, some wandering, wandering holy, holy men. And... Um, there's actually a verse in the Guru Granth Sahib which refers to Satcha Sauda. So one can uh, conjecture that um, the story was uh, written later to, uh, uh, to uh, connect to uh, the, the verses in the Guru Granth Sahib. Uh, but uh, it, it's certainly a, a plausible uh, account of uh, uh, Guru Nanak, even though we don't have a, a contemporary record of, it, of his childhood. Um, there are other stories of, uh, from the Janam Sakis which are, which are much more uh, in the nature of miracle stories. And, uh, uh, you know, from a modern scientific point of view, we would, we would uh, uh, not, not uh, uh, assign them literal truth, but still they are used to uh, illustrate the greatness of Guru Nanak and uh, the moral, moral principles that he taught. Uh, now, turning to... Um, uh, modern modern uh, prose. Uh, this this is uh, uh, so modern Punjabi prose starts to develop uh, in the 19th century, especially the second half of the 19th century. Uh, it's inf influenced by uh, the colonial presence and also by the availability of widespread availability of the printing press at this time. Um, and uh, by Veer Singh is perhaps the most uh, uh, important influential. Uh, Sikh writer, uh, especially in the context of his time. Uh, he wrote novels which were set in the 18th century, mainly, and uh, they were written to inspire the Sikh community by uh, uh, providing heroic tales from the 18th century, again, a time of uh, resistance to uh, Mughal op oppression. So uh, Bhaivir Singh's uh, novel Sundari is uh, set in that first half of the 18th century. It was published in 1898. The story involves a young Hindu girl who is kidnapped by the Mughals, but she's rescued by her brother who has converted to Sikhism, and she also uh, becomes a Sikh and fights alongside uh, Sikh men. So this is a very interesting tale of uh, uh, you know, gender uh, equality, the... Um, uh, the fact that the, the, the protagonist is, is a woman is quite significant, but more generally it's a tale of heroism and a struggle for justice. This was enormously popular when it came out, it, and it really inspired the Sikh masses in uh, a way that is uh, hard to imagine uh, in the present. Uh, so very significant, uh, significant uh, novel. Here's uh, another example of uh, Sikh... Uh, Prose, though one might uh, almost call it poetry, because uh, Puran Singh, who wrote uh, uh, this in this kind of style, was uh, actually influenced somewhat by Walt Whitman, who uh, was one of the pioneers of uh, free verse in the mid 19th century in the United States. So Puran Singh started out as uh, as an academic, as a chemist, but uh, he was inspired to to. Uh, uh, leave that and to just uh, write about uh, about the Sikh faith, and uh, uh, he, uh, a lot of his writing is from the 1920s. 
This is from a collection called The Spirit of the Sikh. And uh, in an, uh, one of the early lectures, I talked about the three pillars of Sikhism, Nam Japo, uh, Kirit Karo Vanchako. Uh, here, uh, bhag- uh, here um, uh, Professor Puran Singh takes these um, uh, three uh, ideas, ideals. Uh, he orders them slightly differently, starting with Kirit Karni and then Nam Japna and Vanchakna. But he adds... Uh, a lot of uh, poetic richness and expands on them in a way that uh, uh, seeks to uh, uh, universalize them. So, for example, when he's talking about uh, Kirit Karni, he talks about uh, other religious traditions as well. Um, so, uh, uh, again, uh, Puran Singh was uh, enormously popular at, at the time, and uh, he's, he's somewhat uh, less well-known now, but he was very significant in um, in his influence on the community at this time of uh, uh, reformation and reform and re- um, revival, the uh, where the Sikh community was responding to uh, the uh, uh, colonial uh, colonial power. Uh, just another side note: uh, this um, these three uh, ideals, uh, Nam Japo Vanchako uh, Kirat Karo, are actually I think uh, can be traced to. Uh, a different work by uh, uh, Bhai Veer Singh. So they're not actually found in the Guru Granth Sahib, but uh, they represent uh, um, in some ways a reworking of uh, uh, what, what the Guru Granth Sahib says. And they're, they're, that statement is, is from a novel by Bhai Veer Singh. Um, here's a modern uh, Punjabi poet, Amrita Pritam. Again, uh, she was not uh, really a, a practicing Sikh, but uh, I think one of the most significant uh, Indian uh, poets and definitely Punjabi poets of the 20th century. And uh, again, uh, she uh, uh, brought uh, not just a, a regional perspective, but also a very uh, important perspective as, as a woman uh, it, to, her, to her poetry. Um, the, there's, there's a lot of her poetry is, is more intimate and personal. The poem I'm going to um, uh, show you as an example today is actually a poem about partition. So again, uh, a connection to uh, Sikh history and the history of the the, the region and and the uh, the whole uh, subcontinent of South Asia. Uh, the poem is uh, in, in Punjabi, but uh, the translation of the title is "I Ask Varish Shah Today." So as background, Varish Shah was an 18th century Punjabi Sufi poet. We talked earlier about Sufis and their um, uh, uh, influence on, on uh, the Sikh tradition. And uh, we mentioned uh, the verses of uh, Sheikh Farid, which I include in the Guru Granth Sahib. Um, Varish Shah wrote a poem, uh, Heer, based on a traditional tragic romance, uh, Heer Ranja. So Heer and Ranja in this uh, poem are young lovers. Um, and uh, uh, there's a little bit of parallel with Romeo and Juliet, but uh, also significant differences. Um, the uh, uh, an- another major character in the poem is uh, a relative of Heer's, um, Kaidon, who uh, poisons her, and uh, then indirectly uh, Ran- Ranja as well, because he takes the same poison. Um, so it ends ends with the death of both both lovers. And uh, uh, Kadosh then uh, makes an appearance in, in the poem. So this is just uh, uh, one verse from, from the poem, I Ask Varish Shah Today. And uh, in this, uh, Amrita Pritam is addressing Varish Shah and saying to him that the tragedy of partition is... Uh, just at such an enormous scale that it is uh, unimaginable. It is much beyond that of a single uh, couple. And uh, she talks about the, um, especially the um, uh, violence against women. And um, she says, uh, today all the Kadons have become the thieves of love and beauty. And uh, where can we find another one like Varish Shah. Varish Shah, I say to you, speak from your grave and add a new page to your book of love. 
So this is a really quite a remarkable moving poem, uh, which um, uh, addresses again this uh, event of uh, you know terrible tragedy in the history of the region. The uh, river Chenab is referred to in this poem. That's one of the five rivers of Punjab, and now it it flows through Pakistan mostly. Um, now I'll turn to six and film, and again this is a very large subject. Uh, I'll divide it into um, Hollywood, Bollywood, which is uh, kind of a generic term used for the uh, uh, modern Hindi uh, uh, film industry based in, in uh, uh, Mumbai, which used to be Bombay, which is where the B comes from in Bollywood. I'll say a little bit about uh, how uh, the events of 9-11 in, in the U.S. Uh, influenced uh, uh, some Sikh filmmaking, and then I'll also briefly introduce uh, another Sikh response to uh, telling their stories in uh, this modern medium of film, uh, this uh, organization, Sikh Lens. Um, so first I want to show you a clip from a Hollywood movie, Gandhi, uh, made in 1982. This was uh, uh, an Academy Award winner. It featured uh, Ben Kingsley as, as Gandhi, and it was really a very much an old style Hollywood epic, perhaps in the tradition of Ben Hur and Lawrence of Arabia, but with uh, this uh, South Asian theme. And uh, this clip uh, shows the Jallianwala Bagh massacre of 1919. Earlier, uh, when I was talking about Sikh history, I had shown you still, still, uh, uh, stills photographs from uh, Jallianwala Bagh. This is a reenactment uh, of the massacre from the movie Gandhi. It begins with the uh, British troops arriving at Jallianwala Bagh, and uh, they, they, um, there are marching soldiers and uh, an armored car. The armored car cannot enter because the enter this, the uh, the garden, the square, because uh, the passageway is too narrow, uh, which actually um, uh, was a blessing for uh, well, a limited blessing, in the sense that it would have done even more uh, damage. Uh, to the people gathered there. But um, uh, then the uh, rest of the clip shows the beginnings of the uh, massacre. Again, this is um, uh, somewhat uh, dis distressing, so if, if you uh, don't want to uh, uh, watch, uh, that, that, of course, uh, uh, feel free to skip it. Um, I've also <laughs> uh, stopped the clip before some of the, the worst scenes, and... Um, it, it is a, a very, very uh, uh, powerful uh, reenactment of the massacre. But if we riot, if we fight back, we become the vandal and they become the law. If we bear their blows, they are the vandals. God and his law are on earth. We must have the courage to take their anger. Cavalry Major. Go in front and... Should we issue a warning, sir? 
They've had their warning. No meetings. Now that you've seen the clip, I'll just uh, add a little bit. The, the movie then continues with the aftermath of the uh, Jallianwala Bagh massacre, how the British responded somewhat weakly, and uh, how it actually energized the Indian freedom movement. So in some respects, this, um, this event marked a turning point in the Indian struggle for independence. And uh, uh, Sikhs really like to... Um, uh, point out how uh, even as a very small minority, they were quite, uh, uh, they were very much at the center of things in the freedom movement, whether it was with the actions of Bhagat Singh as a revolutionary or um, uh, peaceful protesters um, in Jallianwala Bagh and so on. Now, I'd, I'd actually like to, uh, when, I, when I was uh, preparing this lecture, I was uh, reminded of another event which I want to show you in so a slight digression into history. And uh, this is um, uh, actually documentary footage from uh, 1922. And uh, it um, uh, shows what was happening in um, uh, uh, Guru Ka Bagh, which was um, uh, another Gurdwara, part of uh, the site of another Gurdwara. And again, the, there was a conflict between um, the Sikh community and the, uh, the Mahant, the functionary who controlled the Gurdwara. So again, uh, what the, the same kind of issue that I showed you uh, when illustrating what happened in Nankana Sahib. But this is actually uh, uh, documentary footage from uh, a century ago. Uh, there's also a link uh, in Canvas to, uh, um, to the... Uh, uh, to a, a full full account of, of what happened, but I just want to show you this uh, this short clip. It's less than two minutes long. <laughs> See how Sikhs were depicted with an image of mystical souls reinforced with misinformation. Just like today, the media is written by those in power. still in pain as I witness the footage of how one man can be so cruel to another. So uh, I was also reminded of this um, this clip because uh, later in the movie Gandhi, there's a scene where um, uh, the uh, Indian freedom fighters are marching up to uh, uh, British soldiers and uh, being hit with uh, long sticks and uh, uh, taking the blows without uh, complaint. And um, uh, that, that actually occurred uh, after Guru Ka Bagh. So again, 
uh, Sikhs were the first to use this form of protest, something that uh, sometimes uh, gets forgotten in historical accounts of the Indian uh, freedom movement. Okay, back to, uh, back to uh, Hollywood. And uh, I'll um, uh, just talk a little bit about uh, Inside Man, which is a crime thriller directed by Spike Lee. Uh, uh, Spike Lee is a wonderful director, and this is a really gripping movie. Um, the, um, the protagonist is, is one of the uh, main protagonists is, is uh, Denzel Washington. But there's a small part in the beginning of the movie for uh, Varus Aluwalia. Uh, Varus Aluwalia was featured in a couple of clips that I um, referred you to at, very early in the, in the uh, uh, class. Uh, Aluwalia has appeared in several other uh, Hollywood movies, in uh, Wes Anderson movies, uh, but there he's a background character. In this, uh, in this clip, his Sikh identity is integral to the scene. Uh, before this clip, he's, he's uh, sent out by some bank robbers as, as uh, a host uh, from the hostage, uh, hostages they're holding inside the bank uh, with, a, with a, a message for the police. But because he's wearing a turban, he's attacked by the police as a terrorist and his turban is knocked off. And uh, this clip um, that, is, will be available, uh, that is available in cam Canvas um, shows you how he responds to the police and protests about his treatment by the police and how he's characterized as an Arab and, and so on. So uh, uh, again, it's, it's a very, uh, I think, a very sensitive portrayal of, of uh, a Sikh in, the, in a Hollywood movie, and one wouldn't expect any different from Spike Lee. Um, this is a, a different, uh, very different movie, Learning to Drive, and coming back uh, full circle to um, Ben Kingsley. So, uh, uh, in uh, Gandhi, uh, uh, Ben Kingsley plays the title character Gandhi and, of course, looks very different. Uh, this is uh, uh, more than three decades later, so uh, Ben Kingsley is a lot older, but he also now uh, in this movie plays a Sikh. And this movie, in this movie, he plays a Sikh driving instructor. Uh, there are uh, themes of... Uh, uh, Immigration, there's, uh, for example, an, an, immigration, uh, an immigration raid which is featured in, in this movie and uh, some Sikhs who are, uh, don't have papers are arrested. Uh, ben Kingsley is, is uh, luckily not part of, uh, he's, he's sharing the, the apartment, but he's, he's not uh, caught in the raid. It also shows how Ben Kingsley uh, has an arranged marriage and how his wife comes over from, uh, from India. And there are many other examples of cultural differences that are illustrated here. Um, so in, in some ways, it's, it's a sort of uh, standard Hollywood movie, um, and uh, it's, it's uh, maybe not uh, uh, a great movie, but uh, it, it shows a Sikh uh, as, as a central character, and uh, the story very much revolves around his interaction with uh, uh, a middle-aged uh, Western woman who's uh, uh, just gotten divorced and is learning to drive in New York for the first time. Uh, so again, it, it's it's a very interesting anthropological study, if not a great movie. Um, so now I'll turn to six in Bollywood, and this has been uh, a very uh, uh, checkered history for six. Um, six um, were very much a marginalized community from the perspective of uh, uh, Bollywood. Uh, in uh, early Hindi movies, they were typically stereotyped as, you know, rustics or, uh, uh, you know, warriors, uh, uh, not really being shown as, uh, you know, uh, positive characters, but just as comic relief or uh, something like that. Um, that has changed a little bit, uh, but uh, there's still uh, uh, issues of uh, six even when they are lead characters, they are invariably played by bankable stars. So just as in the Hollywood movie, uh, the lead character, um, though, though he was a Sikh, was played by Ben Kingsley, uh, dressed up with a beard and turban, uh, typically um, leading uh, Hindi actors um, like uh, uh, Akshay Kumar, um, Ranbir Kapoor have uh, basically uh, dressed up as Sikhs to play uh, uh, play uh, the lead characters. Uh, I've I've uh, 
included three clips which you can watch um, uh, of uh, examples of, of uh, Sikhs in uh, uh, Hindi movies. The first is actually, um, uh, uh, it's old enough that you can see the whole movie, but uh, uh, even, even clips will be uh, worth watching. This uh, movie is called Shaheed. Shaheed means martyr. And this is a movie based on, on the uh, uh, life of Bhagat Singh, who we've talked about uh, uh, in uh, earlier lectures. And this actually was made in 1965. Uh, this was a time of uh, very you know, heightened patriotism in India, so uh, there were a lot of movies being made which uh, emphasized uh, uh, contemporary patriotism as well as uh, the Indian uh, independence movement. Uh, the other two movies are more, uh, uh, more contemporary from 2008 and 2009. Sing is King was uh, a big hit. Uh, a standard uh, Hollywood action drama, ca comedy with music, all you know, basically everything rolled into one. And uh, the uh, double N in King is is uh, not a typo. That was part of the uh, the title uh, rendition in in uh, English. Um, and um, again, this movie is it's it's uh, not not an, uh, a great movie, but it, it's a sort of standard uh, uh, Bollywood potboiler but featuring, featuring um, uh, uh, Sikh as, as in the lead role. And he's, he's good-hearted, but again, there's, there's a little bit of stereotyping in, in his, the way he kind of carries himself. Um, <clears throat> finally, Rocket Singh, Salesman of the Year, uh, is uh, perhaps a little bit of uh, progression from that kind of approach. Uh, it's, it's more of a smaller movie, uh, Rocket Singh, um, is um, uh, the nickname of, of the protagonist. And uh, he, he's, uh, again, shown as academically not very, uh, not very successful, but he he's, uh, uh, turns out he learns how to be a good salesman. And what is interesting is uh, it shows some of his, his life as a Sikh and how he interacts with, uh, uh, with, with his older relatives and uh, how uh, his uh, Sikh values and ideals uh, um, help him or sometimes make it hard to navigate the uh, difficulties of being a salesperson in uh, a cutthroat Indian business. So it, it, it's a nice gentle, gentle uh, uh, comedy with some romance, of course. Um, now I'll turn to um, uh, six post 9-11. And 9-11, uh, of course, was... Um, uh, enormous uh, event in, in U.S. history, uh, leading both to um, a change in, in um, uh, security, uh, the security apparatus within the country, and also to uh, the so-called global war, war on terror. So it has had uh, long-lasting and ongoing effects on uh, both this country and the world. For six, it, it was... Um, really, in some sense, uh, a catastrophe, because even though none of the 9-11 uh, hijackers had beards and turbans, after 9-11, uh, there was uh, the constant image of Osama bin Laden being flashed on TV screens. And sometimes um, Sikhs would also be represented in TV news as uh, uh, Muslim terrorists. So it was uh, a time of great um, uh, fear and struggle for six in, in the United States. In fact, the first post 9-11 casualty was uh, a sick gas, gas station owner in Arizona who was uh, shot by somebody who, th who decided that he was going to take revenge for 9-11. Uh, and that, that's where the title Mistaken Identity comes from. So this was a documentary made by uh, a young filmmaker who wanted to uh, uh, explain who the six are and describe the what was going on to six after after 9/11, and um, uh, this was uh, very important. Uh, a similar documentary. There's a couple of clips. Uh, one is uh, talking about the making of the movie, and the other is the opening sequence. Divided we fall. Again, talking about um, uh, six and other minorities in the context of uh, post 9/11 America. So uh, I uh, think these would be very. Uh, important uh, important uh, examples to watch. 
And we'll come back to these themes when we talk about uh, Sikhs in the diaspora and in the United States in particular. Finally, um, uh, I'll briefly talk about Sikh Lens, which is a project started by um, a Sikh entrepreneur based in Southern California. And uh, he created a, a film festival in Southern California, which has now expanded to having festivals in other cities. Uh, and uh, basically, he's been funding making of films uh, with various various uh, themes about Sikhs and um, uh, uh, featuring, featuring the Sikh community. Uh, he's also created an association with Chapman University in, in Southern California to uh, uh, get uh, young people, not just Sikhs, involved in uh, making movies about uh, Sikh themes. So uh, uh, there are three clips which uh, I, uh, you can watch later. Uh, the first one is uh, about uh, ENSAF. ENSAF is a nonprofit organization which uh, is dedicated to documenting the human rights violations that occurred from 1984 uh, till the mid-90s, and actually to some extent have been continuing in Punjab. And it's, it's been documenting the, uh, um, the uh, lives of uh, people, young people who disappeared in that time, who basically were uh, taken, taken uh, uh, prisoner and never, never found again. Uh, so the police and army in order to uh, uh, crush, crush the Sikh militancy and to uh, uh, put down what they saw as, as a revolt against the Indian state, um, really resorted to um, very brutal tactics. So Insaf is all about, is basically a, a truth and truth project, a project to uh, get justice for victims. It also identifies some of the perpetrators and uh, uh, talks about them as well. Uh, former members of the police. Um, Guru Ramdas is actually a, a completely different, uh, different film. It, it actually is uh, about uh, Guru Ramdas, but uh, it, it's, it's actually a very uh, lovely, uh, almost poetic uh, shadow play uh, talk, uh, illustrating, illustrating the life of Guru Ramdas. So it's, it's very unusual, uh, very, uh, very nice to watch. And finally, Humble the Poet is about a Sikh rapper, a hip hop artist based in Canada. Uh, and uh, he's been, uh, he's very well known in the Sikh community, the Sikh diaspora community, especially the young. And uh, again, he represents uh, what one might call uh, part of the millennial uh, generation, really using um, uh, media in general and social media to make statements about uh, social justice both for the Sikh community and also more widely for uh, society and the globe at large. Uh, there are many other examples of uh, Sikh film in Hollywood, in uh, Bollywood, and uh, uh, Sikhs, young Sikhs making films, but uh, this, will, I hope, will give you an introduction for further explanation, exploration.